the VA talking. talking. Yeah, I got the VA talking. Yeah, yeah. The new ones coming yeah. out. Well, I just hear my son was talking to Kendall. Now this year, Dramatic powers to raising an issue that every parent in this city, impacted or not, should be outraged over what we are doing to children in temporary housing and in communities that are economically challenged at this time. It is unbelievable what the Department of Education has clearly normalized the lack of education for these students. Every child we fail to educate is a child that potentially will be incarcerated. When you don't give children the basic education, the basic education, and you move about as though it is normal, it is acceptable, and we write them off. No other ethnic group in this city will go through 77,000 children potentially are not being educated. This is unimaginable that this is happening in the city of New York. This would not happen in any other ethnic group in this city. We have accepted the fact that black and brown children and those children who are in temporary housing, it is acceptable for them not to have a quality education. At the end of last year, over the summer, and now during this year, what were we doing and what were we thinking over the summer months? The basic lack of coordination is unbelievable when you think about it. The DOA, DOE, gets an F for failing to even take into account of these children. And it violates the basic law that was handed down, the ruling that was handed down by the courts of appeals. Every child deserves a basic education in the city of New York, in the state of New York. We fought this during the campaign for fiscal equity during the mid-90s. And now we still see that these children are not getting that basic education. And this picture here speaks volume. This is a photo of two homeless shelters, side by side, approximately 50 feet away. One homeless shelter has the antennas on top. The other homeless shelter has no antennas. The children inside the shelter with no antennas, they have a difficulty getting Wi-Fi. They have to run around their communities to find a place to sign on. The winter months are coming. It is an impediment already to have to be in a shelter. We are adding to that impediment by not giving them the access to Wi-Fi. And it's acceptable. We say, no, it's not. And we're not going to remain silent. And when you think about what is happening to these children, the entire city should pause and raise their voice. Every community should be talking about this. Even if your child has Wi-Fi or computers at home, we should all be raising our voices on the significant part of our student population is going, with, is going without. On Fridays, uh, City Councilman uh, Traeger, and I'm really proud of what he has unveiled and he had to subpoena the Department of Education to get basic information. 77,000 students are still waiting for learning devices. <laughs> this, this, is un, this is unimaginable. 77,000 students are waiting for learning devices to help with remote learning. This fall hardest 
and those students living in shelters or temporary housing. 75% of homeless shelter residents surveyed by the City Bar Justice Center agreed that internet access will have, would have help improve circumstances. 67% wanted but had no regular access to internet services. The numbers speak for themselves. Over 100,000 students live in shelters or unstable housing in New York City who would need the internet and technology, but it's not available for them. And when you think about to get the basic information, we need a subpoena and the Department of Education is not forthcoming with this information. That just sends strong alarms to us all. The data which was discussed on Friday showed that 25% of city schools with majority black and brown student populations suffer a low attendance rate. Our children are not engaged. They're not being educated. No one is helping them over this difficult time. Only 3% of non-majority black and brown schools have such a poor attendance. And so today we're clearly calling for the Department of Education to do the following. One, clear daily communication from DOE to every student's family with outstanding remote learning device requests including up-to-date tracking on device delivery. When is the dawn device going to come? It should not be hope and pray. It should be a clear delivery date. Two, immediate line item transparency from all engaged city agencies, including DOE and NYCHA, on COVID-19 era spending related to procurements of remote learning devices and capital investments to expand internet access. Let's build out these locations. Let's give them capital. The capital should be there to build out the access. Three, we need to hold the majority technology and internet providers to be accountable. Where are they? They didn't lose profits during this time they need to now start reinvestment investing in our inner cities. This should include free broadband and wireless service for all students in need. And declare I will clearly use my vote on the franchise board to hold up any voting towards approving the franchise franchise renewal until they come to the table with a better deal. This has taken far too long. We need to close the digital divide. They need to play their role. And if they can't, we need to find new providers that can actually get this job done. This has taken far too long. <laughs> Lastly, the city must utilize its full purchasing power and renegotiate bulk remote learning device procurements. I cannot believe the price the city is paying for iPads and technology. I can walk into Walmart and purchase it for the same price. You know, what is, what is taking place here that we are, we are purchasing retail? We want the city to purchase and renegotiate the contracts and allow local vendors that are MWBEs to play a role to provide these services for our city agencies. And we're writing a letter and sending it to the controller and calling on the controller to audit this entire procedure. The IBO cannot tell us how much money we spent on purchasing iPads, purchasing technology, how much money was spent and where did that money go? We need to follow the dollars so we can come up with real answers. One and one is not equal in two and it's by time we find out exactly what we're doing to address this major issue. And so we have a few of parents and students who are here, uh, some of the parents here and advocates particularly Giovanna, I really want to take my hat off to her. She, she purchased 
iPads with her own money to deliver to students in her community. This should not have to happen. We're much better than this as a city. And these parents and families and students should not have to go through this. But again, I want to hear from my two council persons, and I cannot thank them enough. Again, uh, uh, Councilman Traeger has been a clear and loud voice for the students and parents of this city to make sure they're not left behind. We are lo losing and leaving behind thousands of students that are going to find themselves caught up and not participating in the prosperity of this city. The children we fail to educate are the children we will incarcerate. That is the legacy we are laying down right now in this city. Shame on this administration, shame on the Department of Education, and shame on all of us if we are not speaking up on behalf of all these students. If your children are not having a problem, you should still be raising your voice and saying no child in this city should be going through this. These are all of our children, no matter what block they live on, no matter what community they're in, no matter what is their living status. These are all of our children. Councilman Traeger. I want to thank I want to thank the borough president for using his platform and for using his voice to elevate one of the most urgent issues in our city right now. We're facing a lot of crisis in our city. But he understands like my colleague Ben Kalos and all the outstanding students, parents, families, advocates behind me that the instructional loss that our kids are facing this pain and loss quickly shifts from temporary to generational. And I speak on that as a former teacher, as a teacher at heart. Now, let me say, you know, on Friday we had a hearing and the education department was not happy that they had to spend hours answering questions. Let me tell you what I'm not happy about. And I think many of the folks behind me will agree. The only thing worse than 77,000 kids that we know of not having a device right now for learning is entering this school year knowing that thousands of children still do not have a device. This is not just a failure, this is knowingly failing. Shameful, unacceptable from a city that claims it's the progressive capital of America. They knew. They knew. How do I know they knew? Because we had to subpoena information going back to the spring. I had a hearing back in May asking for attendance on a school-by-school -school basis. I had requested information about the number of children receiving synchronous remote instruction, school by school basis. They told me they would give me the information right after the hearing. May turned into June, no data. June turned to July, no data. July turned to August, no data. August turned to September, no data. S new school year beginning, no data. We had to issue a subpoena and then they magically found the data. And as the borough president mentioned, as the borough president mentioned, schools with the majority of black and Hispanic students were eight times more likely than their white peers to have very low attendance and engagement levels. Not because these school communities don't care about an education, they were not given access to an education. How do I know this anecdotally going back to the spring? Because back in the spring, 
when certain wealthier zip codes of New York were complaining to me and to others about Zoom versus Google Meet, communities like mine in Coney Island, parts of central Brooklyn, parts of the South Bronx, Bronx were reaching out to me saying, Councilman, where is our iPad? Where is our internet? Can you imagine the, the, the tale of two cities, Borough President? Some folks who had seamless transitions to remote learning, debating Zoom versus Google, and folks in my district, folks in shelters, asking, where is my learning device? Where is my education? On the issue of internet access, it is unacceptable that kids in shelter, kids in temporary housing, still do not have Wi-Fi access. I want to remind the public, the city of New York has an agreement with AT&T to provide free Wi-Fi in Central Park, but no Wi-Fi in shelters. Wow. Shameful. Shameful. How much time does it take to pick up the phone, Mr. Mayor? Call AT&T and say, if you can do it in Central Park, you can do it in our shelters, every zip code in New York. I also want to just give greater context to this number of 77,000. For a president, this is what we just know of at this point. There are barriers facing many of our immigrant students because of the structure that the city created to even request a device. There are folks who are understandably nervous giving information on government documents to the government. They knew that this was a barrier. They know that many families did not apply yet out of fear of where their information will go. I called on them months ago to create a different system to give the technology to the schools and let them give it out to the parents and families. They didn't listen. Also, the survey they asked families to fill out to determine the need for devices was flawed. They asked families, do you have a device or a technology at home? What if mom has a technology, but mom is using that to work? How many kids are using shared devices? The promise and the commitment was Every child gets technology. So many kids are using shared devices. You can't learn that way. So that is an indictment. So, Borough President, I join you and I echo your call that every kid must immediately get the technology and education which they deserve. The mayor lost precious time for weeks, months in denial saying every kid who needed it had it. That was a lie. I know we're facing many challenges, but honesty shouldn't be one of them. So I also echo the call. Every kid gets a technology which they need. And also, if they listened to students and parents and families and teachers, they would know that many of our kids are asking for Chromebooks and not necessarily iPads because you need, function, you need to type. If they actually listened to the folks doing the work, they might, they, they might make better informed decisions. So, Borough President, thank you for using your platform. We'll continue to use my platform in the council, Ben Kalos and others, to speak on behalf of our families. This is an indictment, an indictment of the rollout of this year. And we will continue to do everything within our power to hold them accountable until every child, every child, from every zip code, get the technology, internet, and education that they rightfully deserve. In solidarity, thank you very much. Well said by the councilman. The indictment of their failure today is going to be the indictment of our children tomorrow. And we need to be clear on that. There's a direct correlation between the failure of education and incarceration. 80% of the men and women at Rikers Island upon entry don't have a high school diploma or high school equivalency diploma. 
we are knowingly saying we're setting our children up for a life of crime. We are knowingly doing this. And the reason we have free Wi-Fi at Central Park is because these black and brown children are not the center of their concerns in this city. And we'll, we are not going to let this happen. One of our most important allies before we get to the parents is Councilman Ben Kalos. I want to thank him for what he has been doing, amplifying this issue, standing firm on this issue, speaking on behalf of his, this issue. This does not immediately impact his district, but he's saying every child is our child. And we want to thank him for that. Councilman Kalos. Thank you, Borough President Adams. This pandemic has exposed racism at every level of society, systemic racism in government, systemic racism in the private sector. And it is nothing, our, our Department of Education is racist. We have a segregated school system that is more segregated today than it was when they passed when the Supreme Court ruled on Brown versus the Board of Education, and the Department of Education is racist in their distribution of technology during this pandemic. Full stop. It is wrong, it is racist, that the Department of Education would distribute technology to families that are Caucasian and all sorts of other folks while leaving black and brown children, particularly in shelters, without the devices they need to access their education. Now I want to commend Borough President Eric Adams because he's the only candidate for mayor talking about this. And I agree with every single thing he has said. And he's the only candidate for mayor who's willing to stake his vote on this. As a borough president at the Franchise Review Concession Committee, where all these contracts are up for renewal. So that deserves a huge round of applause. As the contracts chair in the city council, I'm proud to work with my brother, uh, Mark Traeger, the chair of the education committee. So just to shine a little bit of a light on what happened, the city spent $250 million on 300,000 iPads and if Borough President Adams went into an Apple store and bought it at retail, he would have saved money on what the city paid. The city actually paid above market for these devices. And as we heard from Chair Traeger, these devices, they're tablets, they don't have keyboards. And so you have children on one side of the digital divide who have a laptop or a computer, a keyboard, a mouse, and broadband, and then you have other children on the other side of the digital divide who have to hunt and peck their way through 100-word essays. Not only that, but LTE isn't broadband. And what we heard at the hearing that Councilmember Traeger chaired uh, from Steve Levin, the general welfare chair, is that these LTE devices don't work in our shelters. So even if we get the iPad into the hands of one of our children that are in our shelters, and just to be clear, there are 18,000 children who woke up this morning in a shelter. There are over 100,000 children in temporary housing. And so at the same time as they struck this deal with T-Mobile, $10 a month, I actually reached out, I picked up the phone, I called Spectrum, and I said, what can you do for our families? And Spectrum, what do you know, said they will give every single family in the city 60 days of free broadband. Did the city do anything with that? Absolutely not. Did Spectrum renew that offer along with Altis? On Wednesday, absolutely yes. Is the city still giving kids less than broadband LTE that doesn't work in shelters? Absolutely, yeah. At the hearing on Friday, we asked the chancellor why kids didn't have these devices. Chancellor Carranza did the unthinkable. He actually blamed our children. He said that the reason we don't have devices is because some of the children didn't give them back. Well, as far as I'm concerned, as a city, we need to buy these devices for the kids to keep permanently. Right. The notion that you would say to a child that has no access to the internet, here it is, 
but now we're gonna take it back and we're gonna take with it the knowledge, the equity that came with it. That's not right. And so one other important piece here, folks like me, folks like Mark, folks like Borough President Eric Adams and my Borough President Gail Brewer, we actually take our discretionary dollars to buy laptops for schools. And what ended up happening at the beginning of this year is as the DOE, as the, you just heard from Chair Traeger, knew they didn't have enough devices, they actually wouldn't let the borough presidents or council members spend any money on laptops because they were afraid that they might actually send the kids home with those laptops. That's why they need the laptops. That's why we bought the laptops and that's why they should let them do it. At the hearing, they said, okay, as of last week, we're gonna let you buy these laptops for these kids, but it's too little, it's too late. So I just wanna say thank you to Chair Traeger. Thank you to Borough President Eric Adams. I support your five point plan and I'll be with you every step of the way to make this happen. Thank you. Every single child deserves internet. I wanna wake up in a city where every single public school student has a laptop and broadband. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So we, want, I, we think it's important for you to hear from the parents and the students because it's about them, what they are experiencing. And we wanna start with Tanisha Grant who represents Parents to Parent. Hello, my name is Tanisha Grant. I am the CEO of Parents Support and Parents New York. I am the lead admin of Moms United for Black Lives New York City. And I, along with Pamela Stewart and our organizations, are tired of the lip service. So what we did is we started an initiative to raise $500,000 to buy our black babies laptops, eight gigabytes, HP and Acer laptops and desktops with no strings attached, because this is our community and this is what community looks like. That's what we're doing. We just brought our first 20 yesterday, but it's not enough. I want to shout out Gail Brewer. Gail Brewer donated $500. I need all my elected officials to donate. They holding up the way that y'all can buy laptops for our babies? Follow this black woman who is leading and taking care of not only her family, but the black babies in her family and in her community and actually doing something about it. This is what change looks like. I expect to see every last one of you on the GoFundMe. Eric Adams, I expect to see you. Mark Trigger, you donated $100. I want you to get your friends to donate. That's sustainable support. Support the community that is on the ground every day doing the work. October 31st, we will give away our first 20 laptops at 123 Morningside Ave in the middle of Central Harlem, Black Mecca that nobody talks about, that then gave this city everything. All your culture come from Harlem. But yet our babies are disproportionately without devices. I'm not just a parent, I'm an organizer, I'm a public speaker, AKA truth speaker. I'm an activist. I was just out in these streets. I'm not playing. Help us because I'm going to be out here, you're going to hear my mouth, and I'm holding you all accountable. Have a good day. Thank you. We want to bring up the parents, uh, Ms. Leiter from Brooklyn Houses. Ms. Leiter? Yes, Leiter. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon. I'm a parent of three children in New York City. I have two children who haven't received a laptop. It's hard to have one child who tries to accommodate her siblings uh, getting their education. It's hard to use a telephone 
to do homework on. It's hard to do a t use a telephone for children to talk to their teachers and, and for Zoom. I asked New York City, you paying all this money for laptops? What happened to my children? I'm not in the shelter, but I sympathize for people that's in the shelter. I pay rent. What happened to my, my children's tablet? Why they don't have a tablet? Why are my sons not getting the education that they deserve? When New York spend, what, $23,000 per child in public education? I could be wrong, but why, can't, why my children don't have the tablet? Why my children being left behind? You know, people that live in neighborhoods who have doctors walking out the doors, nurses, pharmacists, and so forth, that's not my neighborhood. But that doesn't mean that my child can't become a doctor, a nurse, a lawyer, a pharmacist. You know, neglecting my child's education is causing them to be, let, I mean, like, not like they're getting a good education in the first place in their neighborhood, but you're really giving them a, a substantial education by not distributing the proper tools that they need to get their education. And they're not getting the tools. And I feel bad for my homeless sisters and brothers that's mothers, because it's hard out here in the struggle to be a single parent trying to raise boys, girls, and trying to give these children a decent education is very hard. It's hard when you go to the system and talk to people and they look at you like you stupid. I'm not stupid, I have an education. I fought the waters to get an education. I want my children to have an education. I appreciate if New York spent some money to give my children an education. And only a laptop. I'm not even with virtual education. I feel children belong in school. But we have to accommodate according to this situation with COVID. But our children should not be victims of not getting their education. They not, should not be marginalized where they are, X out of the box, they're not getting an education so they could become jailbirds. I don't want my children in jail. I don't want my children incarcerated. I don't want my kids uneducated. I want them educated. And I expect New York, DOE, like I said, I expect New York DOE to help me. New York, help me educate my children. My son does not have a laptop yet. Before COVID started, when you started, he didn't, he didn't have a laptop. He still don't, both of them. What's going on, New York? My daughter is struggling with one little laptop. She can't type all those papers. She's in college, in high school. She can't talk, type all those papers. She's an honor student. You like her being an honor student? You like her lighting candles and making your city look good? Well, let her make her look good so she could go to college and get the proper education that she needs. Give her the tools to help her be successful. All black and brown children don't want to be in jail. They don't want to be poor. Just because their parents had situations doesn't mean the children have to have those situations. Stop burdening our children. I ask you, New York, stop burdening our children. Help our children, give our children the tools that they need to survive and make it in the society. I'm done. That's that real passion that mothers are having all over the city. You spoke on behalf of all of these mothers. Yes, That's that. The yes, there's, right. there's a belief that we don't have that same passion that other mothers have. And you just heard the passion that's real all over the city. We also want to bring up Miss uh, Allen as well to talk about her situation. Hi, good morning. Good. My name is Ariane Allen. I happen to be one of the parents who live in that shelter with the pictures that the mayor, the governor had up, or mayor had up. <laughs> I happen to live in the building without the antennas. So every day, since we start school for the first week, I've been struggling to get my son to do work. For the first week, we couldn't do anything. Because every time we went on the laptop, it's loading. It loads for a whole entire week. We start school because I choose to have and do blended learning, which is kind of working for me. I rather my son in school full time, but I know that can't happen. He go to school two days a week. First, it was three days. I drop him off for the first two days. 
by the second day, they tell me there will be no school on Monday. This was no warning to me. It wasn't in the news from what they said. They was not going to change anything else from what the plan that they had. And then come Tuesday, I found this out. There's no school on Monday for him because he will be in school two days of the week. They didn't report this on the news. So that was, that just put me in a situation now I have to figure out how I'm going to work. He's not in school and there's no remote learning because the tablet is not working. It's very hard for me as a parent. I have an 18 year old who is in college who's going to be home soon, next month, until January. Two kids. I come out of my pocket and I pay for a hot spot on my own so my kids could have an opportunity to do the work. Last year, my son graduated as top of his class and I refused to have my child this year come and tell me he's a C student or a C plus. I do not accept that as a mom, and I will not accept that. So for me, DOE, the mayor, governor, you guys need to step up and do better. I shouldn't have to pay out of my pocket. I live in a shelter. I have to save to move. It's already hard for me to find an apartment with the money that you give to me to say I have 13 something to find an apartment with that amount with two kids. But the apartments are going for 14 and 1600 for one bedroom. But I still have to go and do the groundwork. And I still have to figure out my kids need to eat, they need to be in school, they need to do all of this stuff. And I still have to come out of my pocket. I don't know how they expect us as parents to make it or do this, but I'm gonna try my best to, to do it because I have no other choice. And these parents where I live, I hope for a simple fact that they just open the mouth and speak up. I know me. I don't hold anything back from anybody. I let you know what's my problem, what I'm having an issue with. I call Mr. Harris more than anything. Mr. Harris probably want to ignore my call every now and then. <laughs> but I make sure I call him. Ms. Harris, Mr. Harris try his best with the kid parents who live in my building. He really do. And I commend him for that. So on that note, I have to say thank you, Mr. Thank you. Harris. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And our last uh, speaker that we will do Q and A is Dawn Road Girl Val. So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dawn Rowe. I'm the executive director and founder of Girl Val. I'm also a professor at John Jay College of Criminal Justice. And I stand here before you with families and parents and also with the BP and everyone in their respective places, just really concerned about what's happening. I'm really concerned about the education of young people. And as I listen and I hear the stories, one of the things that I think about is educational neglect. Now, if you're a parent and you don't send your, your child to school, the first thing that the city is going to say or a CS will come to your door and knock on your door and charge you with educational neglect. And I think we need to charge the city the same way for educational neglect, the way that we would charge families, the way that we remove children from home, the way we separate families. We have to be responsible for the life of children. We have to be responsible for the life of, of families. And I'm also thinking about generational curses and the impact when there's no education, or there's a lack of education in the household and the impact that it has. One one of the things that we do as an organization is we work on Rikers Island and I cannot tell you the amount of girls and young women that I've met that don't have high school diplomas and they feel like they can get an education in Rikers opposed to being in the educational system and that's a problem. Wow. I have a problem with wow. that and I stand here before you today I'm angry, I'm upset because it's not fair that black and brown children have to have these experiences and this should not be happening and I want to say to the New York City, New, New York City Mayor we have to hold you accountable as well and we expect leadership and we expect it now. Thank you. Well said. Well said. We, I, I really want to thank, we could, not, we could not have had better voices that are speaking on behalf of the frustration, the anger, the concern, and the innate desire to protect your child. That is what these parents and organizations are representing. This is the level of anger that we're feeling. 
that any parent would feel towards their child. To see that you know your child is on a pathway of not having a productive life in this city. And the active participant of preventing that is the city and the Department of Education. That is alarming. We're open to any questions you would have for me, the council people who are here, or the family members who are here. Yes. Any of the young people want to speak? Yeah. Any of the young people want to just how you how you doing in school? This is your you the leaders. You're the leaders. You're the leaders. Go ahead, go ahead, brother. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lusa Kai Dill. I go to James Madison. Lusa Kai Dill. I go to James Madison High School. I'm a senior now. And as he said, I am having problems doing my um, essays. I'm doing college essay now because I'm about to be in college. I'm having difficulty doing my college essays on my tablet. So I'd, I'd rather have a Chromebook or like a laptop to, to do it with. And that's, that's the only problem I have. So I'm sorry. Thank you. How do you spell your name? L-U-C-E-K-Y. That's my first name. And my last name is D-Y-L. And where do you live? What, what uh, area? Uh, Wortman. Bro, bro, oh, Boro? East New York. That's it. I'm sorry. So you ladies want to you, you, you wanna share your encounter? Any other kids? You, you. Okay, you know, our children, you know. To all the elected officials here, this city has been run by Democrats for a very long time. You all are Democrats as well. You seem not to be able to get along, fight with all the waste and mismanagement and abuse that's going on. We have a mayor that's married to a black woman. We have the DOE who's Hispanic. I'm hearing that this is great, that they're racist. I don't understand. Is it Why does it make sense for people to continue to vote for Democrats like yourself when you can't even get along with the people in your own party trying to make this city work for these people who need help? I ask all of you guys to come up and tell me why do people vote for Democrats when this argument has been going on for a very long time. Well, well okay, first, uh, I think it's important to point out the problems we're having in education didn't start um, in 2014. The city was ran for 20 years by Republicans. Giuliani and Bloomberg. The educational system, level ones and level twos in school were black and brown students during those 20 years. So this is not new. Mayoral control was under a Republican mayor, Bloomberg. He had complete control of the educational system. Currently, the money we're not receiving on the federal level is coming from a Republican president that has clearly prevented New York State and other big cities from receiving the resources they needed from the federal government that happens to be a Republican. So incompetency is not in parties. Incompetency is how we are failing to run the city. So when you say which party has gotten it right, you and no one else can point to any time when we have gotten it right. And that is why we're standing here today that we need to get it right, not look at what party is getting it wrong, but how do we get it right in the city of New York, and we're not doing it correctly now. Next question. Thank you. Yes, shh. I'm sorry. Where do we go from here? Yep, and that's a great question. Clarity, consistency, communication accountability, equality. Inefficiency leads to inequality. We want the city of New York to make sure every child in this city has a notebook, has access to technology, and ensure that they don't have to guess what is their ability to get that access as we're doing now. We need to get it in the hands of every child. That is our number one call, and right now they're not doing that. Thank you. Thank you very much.